major wrestler to miss WrestleMania 38. There's an update on that horrible landing from Mark Gat Moss at WWE Elimination Chamber. Where was Cody Rose during WWE Elimination Chamber? And two major swerves at Impact No Surrender, brother. Hello, good morning, happy Sunday. I am Andrew Pollard here at What Culture Wrestling with the solo Sunday news. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff. Uh, first and foremost, I hope you're having a good Sunday. I hope whatever you've got planned for your Sunday is super cool, whether you're doing something, whether you're doing nothing, whatever's good for you, enjoy it. I hope it goes well. Uh, special shout out to, to my good pal Tony, who's probably been with a very big hangover today because he was celebrating Elimination Chamber, brother. Uh, um, but one person who is not celebrating coming away from Elimination Chamber is Bobby Lashley. Yes, um, the reports have surfaced since Elimination Chamber that the almighty is due for a spell on the sidelines. Now, at Elimination Chamber, Bobby Lashley did not compete, technically. He was there, he was in his gear, he had his big entrance, one of the, the best entrances in the business right now. I, I, I lo I, I'm not a massive fan of a lot of WWE's entrances these days with the graphics, it looks a bit tacky. What they do with Bobby Lashley looks badass, man. But anyway, Bobby was there, he had the WWE title with him, he got in the pod for the Elimination Chamber match, and that was that was pretty much it as far as Bobby Lashley's uh, involvement was concerned because he got taken out of the match by, I guess technically by Austin Theory, but also by Seth Rollins because Seth Rollins powerbomb Theory through Bobby's pod. Um, the, the the announcers pushed hard the angle that Lashley, the impact of that, he banged his head on, on the structure um, of the chamber itself. Uh, Bobby was taken out of the match and it was uh, concussion protocols were followed. That was uh, that was what we were told by announcers. It was concussion protocols that kept Bobby Lashley from re-entering the match. Of course, Brock Lesnar would go on to do Brock Lesnar things to a whole bunch of victims. So everybody ate an F5 and everybody got pinned by Brock Lesnar. Yes, Brock Lesnar eliminated everybody as he became WWE Champion. But coming out of this, because WWE, as I mentioned, they said it was concussion protocols. They pushed this angle on uh, on, on the social media platforms and on digital that, that Bobby's dealing with concussion. Coming out of this, though, uh, the former WWE writer, Kazim Famiyide, uh, was speaking on the, the Ringer Wrestling Show and said that he'd heard um, that Bobby Lashley is indeed injured. Uh, it's, it's a shoulder injury. It's a shoulder injury. It's going to require surgery. And that surgery will keep the almighty on the shelf for four months. Um, now, if this is true, obviously, it's a, a massive blow for WWE. It's a massive blow for Bobby Lashley. Uh, it's somebody, a guy in Bobby Lashley who these past, you can, you can accuse WWE of, of, of uh, I, I don't know <laughs> there's lots of things you can accuse WWE of but I think one of the major positives for them over these last couple of years is is how they've handled Bobby Lashley they they finally gave him that genuine main event push that that ball to run with and I think Lashley in that first run as WWE champion and the build to it was just presented really well was handled really well and he feels like a top top star a true main event star in that company now I'm not saying he's brought Lesnar Roman Reigns but he's not a million miles off uh, and so this is a blow going into Mania to be missing Bobby Lashley, um, a, a Bobby who some people thought maybe he'd go in as WWE Champion to Mania. Of course, that is going to be Brock Lesnar in a champion versus champion match against Roman Reigns. Uh, yeah, Kazim Famuyidi says, from what I'm told, it's, uh, it's for at least four months, shoulder surgery. I'm hearing that he might not even make it to Mania. From what I'm told, he's shooter and should be out for some time now. Of course, WrestleMania uh, 38 is the 2nd and 3rd of April. So if it is four months, then Showcase of the Mortals uh, will not be there for Bobby Lashley, which, man, that's that sucks. Um, the injury seemingly happened. He got hurt in his match against Brock Lesnar at Royal Rumble, if this story is to be true. So we'll have to see see what happens with Bobby Lashley on Raw tomorrow night, if this is addressed in, in the coming weeks. Um, and if Bobby is out for uh, any length of time, hopefully it's as short as possible because the dude has been absolutely killing it. And speaking of killing it, God damn, man, the... The landing from Mad Cat Moss had a lot of people fearing the worst last night at Elimination Chamber. Mad Cat Moss took a horrible landing um, in his match against Drew McIntyre. Uh, McIntyre hit him with the Alabama Slam, Hawker Holly's old finishing move, and, and Moss just landed on his head as he came down. It looked horrible. The replays made it look 10 times worse. And it's one of those where it just like, oh man, it, it, it was totally different uh, in some ways. But it's one of those moves where it, it's like when Lance Archer took that horrible 
bump just before he well obviously the, the bump that put him on the shelf for a while in, in AEW where it's like oh man no nah, that's that's not good um, but yeah PW Insider Mike Johnson over at PW Insider has an update on this say that Mad Cat Moss is fine so that's cool he was checked backstage referee Jessica Carr checked on him straight away the match did continue McIntyre got the win with the Claymore and then stood on the prone body of uh, of Mad Cat Moss as he made the pin with Angela the sword I, that sword does I, I got nothing does nothing for me um, but yeah Mad Cat Moss was according to Mike Johnson was checked backstage was said to be okay um, and then it's likely that there'll be further checks because obviously the adrenaline's kicking in at that point in time so you know wait for things to simmer down a little bit and then check on the dude again um, and obviously checking in before you fly back out from Saudi Arabia and it also looks like we are <laughs> we're definitely going to be getting that Mad Cat not Mad Cat Moss sorry the happy Corbin versus Drew McIntyre match at WrestleMania 38 because post match there was all like snarly stares and like I said when when the pin was made on Mad Cat Moss McIntyre is kind of pointing his sword at, at, at happy Corbin so yay that's for WrestleMania Woo. Uh, um, another situation that Mike Johnson at, at Pro Wrestling Insider has uh, an update on as well is Cody Rhodes now some people were speculating that hey, maybe Cody Rhodes rocks up in Saudi Arabia at Elimination Chamber because Cody Rhodes is a free agent. He can go wherever he wants. He could he could turn up on Raw tomorrow night. He could turn up on SmackDown on Friday. He could turn up on NXT if he really wanted. He could go to Impact Wrestling. He could go to the NWA. I'm, I'm always cool for Cody at anything tied to the, the National Wrestling Alliance, as they've done before, obviously, a former NWA champion after uh, exchanging that belt with uh, with Nick, Nick Aldis a couple of years ago. But yeah, Cody was not in Saudi Arabia, but he was in Orlando, Florida. That's that's what this report states, that he was spotted at Orlando International Airport uh, approximately an hour after Elimination Chamber finished. Now, this ties in nicely to reports earlier in the week. Um, I think it was Justin Brasso uh, re- reported this uh, from Sports Illustrated, um, that Cody was going to be heading to the WWE Performance Center as soon possibly as this weekend. Now, of course, the WWE Performance Center is in Orlando, Florida. So the American Nightmare spotted at Orlando Airport at the weekend that he's said to be going to the Performance Center in Orlando. This return is happening. <laughs> For those who are doubting it, it's definitely, definitely happening. Um, like I said, Cody can can go wherever he wants, as and when. He uh, is an, his departure and Brandy Rhodes, his wife, uh, both departed AEW on this past Monday. That was when it was made official. They've been working. Uh, I think both of them have been working about contracts since the turn of the, of the year uh, because basically new deals couldn't be agreed with Tony Khan. Um, the, uh, since then, you've had lots of rumblings and speculation that Cody was asking for like mega money because uh, he was, when the company started, he was one of the highest paid stars. But since then, they brought in people like Brian Danielson. They brought in people like CM Punk. They brought in people like John Moxley. All people who do not come cheap and who will be getting a premium wage. I've, stories. I don't know how true they are, but there's stories that Mox is on like six million dollars a year, um, and that's a lot more than Cody Rhodes was. So Cody wanted to match, wanted parity with the top guys who come in. Tony Khan didn't really see the value in that, and that's where we're at. So yeah, Cody to WWE. It's inching ever closer, brother. Um, he's going to be on Mania. It's just a case of what does he do and who's it against? Who who uh, who gets beat by Cody Rhodes? That's a, that's a conversation. Um, a, a conversation that always happens with Bullet Club is who's going to turn next? Who's getting booted out next? And last night, big news coming out of Impact No Surrender. It looks like the Gorillas of Destiny are out of Bullet Club. Now, this is pretty damn major news, man. And also, I'm always happy to talk about wrestling, give some love to Impact whenever I can on these uh, news videos on a Sunday. Um, but yeah, Jay White, Jay White did, I was talking before about Brock Lesnar, did Brock Lesnar things at Elimination Chamber. Jay White did very much Jay White things. <laughs> at, at No Surrender last night for Impact. Um, now, it was the, the Grills of Destiny taking on the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Champions, the Good Brothers, Carl Anderson and, and Luke Gallows. Uh, and yeah, Chris Bay came out, the strap of the referee. Jay White, Switchblade, got in the ring, hit the Blade Runner on Tangaloa, and then that was followed by uh, a Magic Killer for the one, two, three. And then all the, the two sweet skis by uh, Chris Bay, by Switchblade Jay White, and also by Anderson and Gallows as the Grills of Destiny are seemingly out of Bullet Club. Um, this is this is big, man, especially with Tamatonga because Tamatonga was one of the, the founding fathers of Bullet Club when that first came together. So, and then even Tangaloa has been there oof, in Bullet Club since, what, 2016, I think it would be. So, yeah, this is big news coming out of Impact Wrestling. Uh, big news, I know Surrender, big news coming out for anything today with Bullet Club. Uh, and also other big news is that 
Eddie Edwards, man, no good done. Eddie Edwards uh, turned on Team Impact uh, and has aligned himself with Honor No More. That happened in the main event of No Surrender. Now, it was Eddie Edwards going into this was meant to be on Team Impact against the basically the Team ROH, uh, Honor No More. Uh, but no, of course, Eddie Edwards was taken out earlier in the show. Chris Saban found him, laid out backstage. What are you going to do? Oh, we'll get Willie Mack in his replacement. Cool. And then Eddie Edwards makes his way to the ring midway during the main event with Kenny, which is his kendo stick, if you're not aware of that, because we have to name all these things over time, like Floyd and whatever else Jericho's going to try and get over this week. Uh, yeah, Eddie came out with Kenny, uh, held Maria Canellis for the gore with Rhino, but then swerved everybody, brother, and just decimated the whole of Team Impact with his kendo stick, aligned himself with Honor No More. And that's how things let, were left as, as No Surrender went off the air. Now, of course, Eddie Edwards is somebody who is, uh, well, one of his nicknames is the heartbeat of, of Impact Wrestling. So th- this guy's Impact through and through. Uh, he's a two-time former, I guess it'd be TNA world champion, but a, f- a former world champion in the company. Um, but away from that, he's also a former Ring of Honor world champion. He's also the first ever Triple Crown Ring of Honor champion. He's also the first ever ROH TV champion. So, you know, this, there are clearly roots there for Eddie Edwards and Ring of Honor. But yeah, let's uh, quickly wrap up with a couple of questions that have come in and then I will get out of your hair this morning. Um, his Lordship Dan Zimmerman, quite a name there. Uh, I haven't watched WWE in two years, but from the reports I've read, heard, uh, the brand extension needs to die. Unify the main roster titles and dissolve the women's tag titles. Thoughts? Oh, jeez. <laughs> How long have I got this morning? Yeah, um, have I got enough time to properly go into this? Because this is a whole topic, several topics to dive deep on. The brand extension needs to die. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it's, it's a tricky one. because it's When you put that brand extension in place, whenever they put it in place, you need to stick to it. Otherwise, it becomes pointless. It becomes, you know, it's just, no. It's There's no point on the brand extension if people are just going to randomly rock up on, on different shows. You've got to be stern and hard and like, well, these guys are on Raw these guys and girls uh, and these guys and girls are on SmackDown that's it it's a hard line in the sand and then when they do clash at say Survivor Series it feels like a big deal and none of that brand supremacy because I moved to SmackDown last week and now I'm all team blue that 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 bit can die as well but um, no I think I, I don't think the brand split itself is a problem I, I think it's just how you handle it and it's the same with anything really with, with WWE um, what was the next point unifying the main roster titles I'd be cool with that I'd be okay with just you on not traveling world champion because we're not talking like the National Wrestling Alliance where you're going through the territories and you're having a month in, or you're having maybe a two month program in Mid-South and then you're going off to somewhere else no I I'm not talking a traveling champion, but I think that one champion that bounces between brands can work again if handled right. Um, but also, I think you can work with two world titles. I think, again, if done correctly, we've seen how great a job they've done with Roman Reigns on SmackDown uh, as, as the, the, the head of the table, the tribal chief, the world champion there. Um, and that works brilliantly. And at the same time as well, there was Bobby Lashley as, as world champion on Raw. I, I talked before about how great a job they did with him. So you can make two world titles work. It's just a big if with WWE. And finally, dissolve the women's tag titles. God damn, man. Yeah, absolutely. What, what a pointless set of belts. Uh, there was so much hope when these titles were brought in. Uh, and, and there was so much potential with this. But it's just a hodge. They, 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 they introduced the tag titles without really having tag teams. There was the Iconics. There was Bailey and Sasha being put together at that point. Um, but the, other than that, there wasn't like any. T- and you could argue that I know uh, Bailey and Sasha aren't necessarily a tag team at well at, at that point in time, really. So you had the Iconics, uh, you had Fire and Desire, Man- Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, I guess, uh, and then there's the Riot Squad. But then you break up all of these teams. You break up the Iconics. You break up Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. You break up the Riot Squad. You fire two of the Riot Squad. You fire the Iconics. Jesus, man, <laughs> this is getting grim for a Sunday. But yeah, you you, you split up these teams and you fire. Uh, some of the ladies involved um and then you just make hodgepodge tag teams again um yeah it's i just think it's just been a bust these these women's tag titles because there's no tag teams the tag teams that you put together are just thrown together just for the sake of it um i, I like my tag teams to come up as tag teams uh, for for i don't know for a team to debut in nxt as tag teams uh and then to when they get to the main roster, they're a tag team already. Um, but I'm a fan of tag team wrestling, and Vince McMahon clearly is not, so peh, what do I know? Um, a quick one from Mark Sullivan. Morning, Andrew. Happy Sunday. Apollo says hi. Mark, thank you for the dog picture, dude. Uh, and what a picture it is. I saw this this morning when I opened my Twitter, and it's like, 
God damn, that's a cute dog. Uh, so yeah, hope you and Apollo are doing well. Uh, thoughts on who Cody's first loss in WWE will be against? Have a great day. Hashtag this is the news. Oof. See, there's, there's the, it's going to be Triple H, man. He's going to come now. Uh, Triple H is probably never wrestling again. Um, and, you know, first and foremost is health on that. Uh, but that's that'd be the running joke was if the stars would have aligned a little bit differently, then Cody Rose with Triple H would have been great. Um, I, I think probably maybe Cody would have won that as well. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say who's first loss could be against because it depends how they're going to use him. We're hearing that he's going to be used as a top guy, as a main event talent, um, pushed at the top of the card. Maybe it's Roman Reigns, but I don't know. It's like, how hard do you want to go with Cody? I mean, are you bringing him in and you're thinking, well, no, he's going, we're making him literally the guy, in which case maybe he's the one that beats Roman Reigns down the line, finally, for the Universe title, because I don't think I don't think Roman's losing that at WrestleMania 38. But yeah, I, as to who gives yeah Cody his first loss, Part, I don't know, for some reason I'm thinking Drew McIntyre. Um, but again, it depends what you, how you bring him in. If you bring Kill as a baby face or a heel, I think it'll be a baby face. So then you're thinking, who's the heel that finally gets the win? Um, no, nah, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go with Roman. I'm going to throw Roman Reigns out there as, as Cody Rhodes to be another one to, well, add to that, the ever expanding list of names uh, who the the big dog, can we still call him the big dog? That's a name I've not heard for a while. I don't know why I said that. The head of the table, the tribal chief. Um, yeah, the needle mover. <laughs> when I think needle mover, uh, I, I, I think Adam Sandler films for some reason that I'm thinking other stuff. But anyway, this has gone on for long, way, way, way too long for you this morning. Apologies to Editor Ryan if he needs to trim any of this out. Uh, but this has been the Solo Sunday News from myself, Andrew Pollard, here at What Culture Wrestling. Be sure to follow us at What Culture WWE. <laughs> Follow me if you want. I can't promise it's going to be any fun, but you might as well do it. It's uh, at Culture Left Peg on Twitter. Be sure to have a great Sunday. Whatever you're doing, whatever you got planned ahead, just do whatever you think is cool. Make the best of whatever situations arise, and hopefully it all works out cool. And then it's hey, it's Monday tomorrow. Hey, uh, which means brothers Murray and Wilborn will be back with the Monday news. I'll catch you next weekend. Have a great week. Have a great Sunday. See you soon. <laughs>